hello everyone i hope everyone is doing okay or feeling okay to, today uh thank you so much Anelda, for inviting me to participate in this uh it's a very, it's very inspiring to see such initiatives being put in place uh so i'll jump straight into it and i'll also turn off my video to seven bandwidth okay um yeah, so as introduced, my name is Laura. I am based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I, 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 I call myself a geospatial engineer uh, by training, because uh, that's what I did for my undergrad. And then afterwards, um, started working and I work for a social enterprise in Nairobi called Sanaji as an operations analyst, where I support teams in using data. Uh, to support their decisions. But also on my part time, I work as a regional ambassador, um, specifically at the moment supporting a program called Eberashi Maps, and I'll share a bit more about today. Um, so to, uh, for today, I'll also be talking about communities, tech and science communities by basically using uh, my experience uh, in the Youth Mappers network. So, I thought of maybe first just sharing about what Youth Mappers does and what we do. Um, and basically what Youth Mappers is, is that we are a network of student clubs. And these are students who are interested in youth leadership, um, mapping, and contributing towards sustainable development. And uh, these chapters are actually made of students who are pursuing undergrad, masters, uh, degrees up to P the PhD level. So it totally depends on a chapter and how they're structured. And um, even just emphasizing on that is that these chapters are fully student-led, so uh, they're fully independent, uh, whereby they figure out their own structures, how the membership looks like, and what, they, what kind of activities they'd like to, to uh, undertake each semester. And the, net, uh, the network actually started uh, in 2015. So in the mapping and just partial field, we, in the month of November, we usually celebrate uh, the effects and impact of GIS in the world, so how it's being used. So during an event uh, in the USA, that's when the network was launched. Uh, and it was launched by the, as an initiative under the USA Geocenter and just with four universities, starting with four universities in the USA. Uh, but so many years later, uh, around five years, five to six years later, we, we've grown to around 277 chapters around the world uh, in 61 countries. And a majority of those chapters are in, within the African continent. And actually in South Africa, we have a number of chapters there as well. And uh, what we mostly do is that we support um, different projects and initiatives that require uh, mapping or location-based data for their work. And uh, we do this by using platforms that are open, uh, where data is shared openly as well. And uh, you might be thinking then uh, how, how mapping is useful or why would it even be necessary um, in, in the world. But we tend, to, we tend to use mapping for a number of, um, a number of reasons even in our personal lives when we want to uh, go to a store and you want to try out a new restaurant we check uh, to see where it's located so that we can figure out uh, sort of which route to use if i'm using public transport uh, which bus stop to go to but maps are also important in critical cases say for example um, where we need emergency services and we need to uh, go to a hospital you might want to find out what's the closest one and which services are, are offered there. So that's where how maps are important. And uh, even looking further into like the sustainable development goals, uh, that it's very essential as well. And it can, it can also be shown how mapping has been used in, uh, to sort of achieve uh, some of these SDGs. Um, and just, yeah, just as a sharing as well, uh, in as much as we can see how mapping is important, and obviously, I think everyone is working uh, very hard to achieve the SDGs or even to achieve some level of development uh, within some regions, especially regions like the African region, we still have issues to do with data. I don't know if for most of us, even as we are doing our research uh, and, our, and even our school work, we have uh, had good ideas, but gotten to a point where we didn't get data to carry out our research. Uh, that is something that happens oftenly. 
Uh, and that's why for us, we mainly work on creating open data that we can use and organization, organizations can use for their purpose, but we also share openly this data so that anyone else who's working in the same area would be able to access this data as well for their own purposes. Um, and we mostly do that through a platform called OpenStreetMap, uh, which, which mainly works uh, through communities. So uh, when you're looking at the OpenStreetMap platform, actually anyone can create an account and um, start contributing, uh, add information if they are locally in that area, um, and also use the data for any purpose. But um, what, what you've seen mostly is that uh, we get to do a lot more uh, when we do it together. So, so say, for example, if I am best in Nairobi, um, I'm able to do some kind of mapping, um, make, make some kind of progress individually, but I'm not able to map the, the entire country, the entire city, uh, even an entire town by my own. And that's how communities really come in uh, in this case, because uh, you're able to create uh, a huge impact and you're able to sort of work together to build something that will be useful to, to everyone. Uh, and the good thing with the OpenStreetMap platform is that we one only needs an internet connection to get started. Uh, one does not require any technical skills um, and you're able to uh, sort of collaborate, collaborate remote, uh, remotely um, and be able to create a lot of impact. And just, <laughs> I guess to share more onto that is that also by working through communities and uh, um, work and mapping together, uh, and just as a sharing, we're able to create more impact. We're able to see um, if we compare with other map options, able to see how a lot of rural areas and unmapped areas are able to be mapped. Uh, a good example would be uh, uh, in 2015 when there was an earthquake in Nepal. Um, and what happened is that uh, the, the that earthquake. Uh, that particular earthquake had a really high magnitude and around 9,000 people died and uh, 22,000 people were injured. So for even um, organizations like Red Cross Societies to be able to offer uh, help and be able to serve as uh, a good number of people as much as they could, they needed um, to know uh, how, how the area looked like before before that, before the earthquake happened, so and to be able to do, to do that, you would need maps uh, to see sort of, for example, if you're able to, if you have like all the buildings in an area, you're able to to see or estimate how many people are living here before this earthquake, so so that you can also inform uh, things like your response. So, for example, um, if we serve 500 people from this locality. And from our data, we can see that a thousand people lived here, then it means we still need to do a little bit more. Another thing as well was that um, even in terms of response, you still need to know where the roads are to be able to, to offer as much help as possible. Uh, and what you can see below is the OpenStreetMap platform. And this is where the entire OpenStreetMap community around the world came in together to support the mapping of these areas. And you can compare um, uh, the, uh, what we commonly use, the Google Maps option, and uh, what was mapped on OSM. Uh, and this just further emphasizes the point on um, creating, creating more impact. Uh, yes, we are able to do things individually. We are, are able to, um, to sort of uh, contribute uh, or create impact individually, but when we come together, uh, we are able to create more impact, especially in situations where it's really needed. Uh, so I'd say that would be my first point to share about science and tech communities and why they are important, uh, is that we're just able to um, have that really huge impact that can really change the world in a way. Um, I, I do want to, to, to focus a lot on some of the other benefits that come through communities uh, or individual benefits, because I, um, I, I think uh, this, there was a session that was shared by the Our Ladies Community in South Africa where uh, all that was mentioned. So I hope if you missed that, you would watch the recording for that. 
Um, yeah, so obviously through communities, we are able to get things like mentorship. Uh, we are able to network with um, like-minded people. But I'd say also another thing is that you're able to create more impact in the world. And going back to youth mappers is that uh, some of the things that come through the youth mappers community is that uh, all our members get a great learning opportunity because uh, mostly the concepts that we do share things to do with open data and also using data and technology in the social social impact space are things that are usually not covered in the curriculum. For example, uh, when I was doing my undergrad, these are things that were uh, not thought at all or just mentioned. So you get a chance to learn new concepts and how you can actually use your skills uh, to, for social impact. Uh, another thing you also get to grow sort of um, the leadership and also the technical expertise through uh, fellowships that we usually offer. And then another thing is that it's also an, an entry to the um, uh, larger communities that exist because you're starting at a a small community within your school environment. And of, uh, for most of us, once you complete school, then you try to figure out what next and what you can join um, now that you left the school community. Um, other things also include things like job opportunities. Uh, I think uh, around the world, especially in the African region, uh, there's still an issue or a big issue, a, a big challenge when it comes to youth employment. So. Uh, getting also an entry into that can be easy in some way. Uh, so also this ties back to community work, commu uh, science and tech communities, just because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's almost impossible for someone to join a community and not to be get a chance to learn a thing or two. Uh, most, com most communities tend to have learning programs that people can join with different tracks. So say, for example, you'd find um, in a tech community, you'd find a track for um, something like data science, another track for software development, even you could find some communities breaking that down to back-end development, front-end development. So one thing for sure by joining science and tech communities, you'll always get to learn. Um, another thing is that you, even as you, if you get a chance to join while in school, you also uh, get a chance to transition while uh, once you finish school. So um, say, for example, you might, uh, Around the world, I've seen a number of Facebook developer groups. Uh, you might join um, a campus one while in university, but then you'll find out that when you finish school, you transition to maybe the national community in the country. So that's also another thing that uh, communities come with. Uh, but as we are doing all this work and uh, working to uh, to to create these communities, to create uh, to be able to use data and tech for good. Uh, we still do encounter some challenges. So uh, for example, in the mapping and um, geography space, there's still a lot of, a lot of um, um, let's say, there's no diversity uh, in these spaces. For example, uh, uh, in the OpenStreetMap community, uh, a community that has around 6 million contributors around the world, only 2 to 5% are women. And uh, when you look at the, at the board, so the open swap community has a foundation board that makes the major decisions for the community. Only four out of the 32 members that have been in the board have are female members. Actually in the current board that started serving at the end of last year, there's no female member. And uh, you might be wondering then how, like why is this important or is this, is this just something that's interesting statistics to share. But uh, we can see the effects of this on uh, how things are controlled because once uh, female voices or there's no diversity within a community, um, we tend to see how the decisions look like. For example, in the mapping space, you'll notice that uh, a number of what's usually mapped um, as maybe general features, but tend to not include information that would be useful to female members. For example, you find out people are mapping roads, but no one is interested, interested in mapping things like traffic lights. Uh, which uh, would be interesting for people like women and girls who are interested to see uh, how personal security and infrastructure are related. You'll also notice things like uh, health facilities being mapped, but not uh, including uh, services offered. So there's a hospital offer maternal health, gynecology and all that. So um, this is how uh, uh, such inequalities end up uh, being present in data systems and how 
data is used and how maps are used. So, um, and some of the things that are driving to this inequality is the lack of safe spaces. Uh, so in as much as you're joining communities and so many communities are available, at times communities can be unfriendly as well for women and girls um, in terms of the, how language is being used, how they are inclusive. Uh, there are also generally fewer women who are undertaking STEM, uh, STEM careers or studying in a STEM process, which uh, also alludes to this inequality. Then we also lack enough women that we could look up to. So, so for example, in the current uh, OpenStreetMap board, uh, where there's no woman in the board, uh, as a person maybe who's just joining the community, maybe they would assume this is something that women do not pursue and not go for that. Then other things would be imposter syndrome, uh, which mostly affects women and girls as well, and also domestic care, and also the perceived uh, inability that women cannot undertake field work and technical um, careers. So within the Yopapas community, we launched a program called the Eduashi Maps Program, which is designed to increase women's participation within uh, the Yopapas network and the OpenStreetMap community in general. And it was catered with uh, these five pillars where we would like to highlight uh, projects that are being done to um, basically improve the lives of women and girls. Um, and sort of the activities that are involved are mainly uh, on professional and career development, where we host a number of workshops and technical sessions as shared earlier, then a regional ambassadors program to also uh, improve the awareness and how these activities are being carried out around. And also, we also get to do mapping campaigns. So doing uh, projects that are specifically uh, sort of addressing issues that women and girls uh, are facing. Uh, and then, although this was not started as well, is to have like a leadership fellowship for uh, women leaders within the, within the, the youth mapper's network. And, uh, and I guess this is just also just to mention back as well, maybe for maybe some of us who are leading communities uh, or are looking even to start uh, different communities that it's very important as if, if your community does is not diverse, is not inclusive, it's very important to launch initiatives that are actually addressing those challenges or actually looking to improve the diversity of a community in one way or another. And just to share an example of a, of a mapping project that we are doing uh, in Sierra Leone and Nigeria uh, is that we are mapping uh, the distribution networks of electricity um, in, the, in those countries with uh, a number of organizations and also the government, uh, uh, the governments in those, in those countries. And someone might be wondering how, how is electricity actually related to gender and inequality is that actually electricity, uh, access to reliable, reliable electricity is not a gender neutral issue, uh, meaning that it affects women even more um, when it's not um, sort of catered for. Uh, for example, since uh, the energy sector sort of lies under uh, STEM in, in a way, because it's a very technical uh, cost, if, if uh, we are looking at improving uh, access to electricity, we would hope that there would be more jobs, meaning more women and girls could benefit from it directly as they get access to these careers. Um, if also when looking at uh, how we handle household tasks, even within the region, still a lot of people using uh, firewood uh, and I'd say worse options than electricity with more distribution, then we're also able to improve these things. Uh, and people switching to using electricity as opposed to uh, and cleaner fuels as opposed to other options, other worse options. Then also looking at street lights and what I was mentioning earlier when talking about personal security with more access to certain things that we are able to see as well. Uh, and with such initiatives, we've seen uh, an increase in in sort of the diversity. Of, 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 of these clubs and their community in general. So, and some of the lessons that we've learned is that women tend to participate more in projects that actually intentionally recruit them. So uh, if, if we are seeing a diversity problem and we are actually reaching out to women and sort of explaining all these things 
and why they're needed. We tend to see more women participating and taking up more roles. And just to share a bit more of my journey with community as well, and sort of how that hasn't evolved to where I'm at at the moment. I uh, started when I was in university. Uh, uh, I was almost completing school um, and I started looking out for opportunities for students in the region. I didn't find any in within the region actually. Most of them tend, uh, were either global uh, opportunities or, or for students within the USA. Uh, but I got to found about his mappers, created a chapter and started a club in school. Then uh, I started the hosting mapping activities like training sessions. We had um, a project that we ran uh, to map against mala uh, malaria and HIV and AIDS, especially for the HIV and AIDS campaign, which uh, also affects a lot of women and girls. So it, uh, within, within Africa, it's also shown that over 70% of HIV infections are, uh, are in women. So there's a project that was being run in the country to, for that, and you are able to run a project for the entire year. Uh, and also just by hosting this uh, project, we tell, we, something else that we saw is that a lot of women and girls uh, participated just because uh, they were able to see it's an issue that's affecting uh, fellow women and girls. Uh, during that year, we received an award for, for this project and we got a chance to attend a conference. Then the next year, I got a chance to attend an international conference um, where now also that transition from a student's community to an even to a, to a regional and global community. Uh, then I actually got a chance to come to South Africa in 2019 for a leadership fellowship, which was amazing. I uh, got a, a chance to meet, uh, see fellow like-minded youth and um, also gained a lot of uh, technical uh, and leadership skills as well. And got a chance as well to visit South Africa, which is an amazing country. Then I guess afterwards, uh, really just got interested in sharing and um, contributing to events, contributing to communities, sharing about the work we're doing locally. And afterwards, uh, after finishing school, again on the transition from a small community, we created a national community, we started having uh, a lot of activities as well, and now even having even bigger goals like reaching, reaching out to government on how we could work together and even different organizations. And uh, lastly as well, became an, uh, a regional ambassador for youth mappers because as a student, it was all volunteer work, uh, but then sort of transitioning to a, to a part-time job, uh, even able to create more impact. Uh, and just by sharing this is that um, there are a lot more of opportunities that come in terms of what, work, what one can do uh, the kind of impact they can create by joining uh, science and tech communities. Uh, I'm sure a lot more was shared during the uh, ladies workshop on um, sort, of, sort of individual benefits that one can get, such as, such as getting uh, a village that generally or mainly supports you uh, in one way or another, getting a mentor. It can be difficult for, for someone to reach out to, um, to someone individually to become their mentor, which is still okay, but through a community at times, you get such programs that have already been designed for you, which make things a little bit easier. So I guess my, my greatest takeaway uh, or what I'd like to leave today uh, saying is that um, with, wherever you're working, um, find, find communities that you could join. They can be local, they can be regional, um, they can be global. Yeah, just uh, find communities. They can be online communities or local communities. Um, for most of communities, it's usually uh, free to join. Uh, all their materials and resources are usually available. Um, so don't be scared, find communities, join communities uh, so that you can be able to grow in one way or you can also be able to contribute in one way or another. If there are leadership opportunities within those communities, feel free to take those up as well. And the, the second thing is that if in case you uh, went to look for communities that you think would be relevant and you didn't find any, uh, 
feel free to create communities as well and create a movement um, uh, that, that is sort of maybe uh, for a certain niche. So uh, say for example, you are working in geology or uh, you're working in tech, but you're interested in using tech for gender issues, you can create a community for that. Uh, or at times you can even find global networks uh, or global communities that are uh, that sort of allow for affiliating, so creating a smaller uh, network of that network. Uh, that, that is also something that you can do. So I'll stop there, and I hope this has been helpful in my way.